Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to load a CSV file or database into Geosoft. It does, yeah, so for example, this is the file we're going to work with today. And so it's actually this is a .dat file um, and it's open in Surfer. But the same applies if it were a text file or a CSV file. The same doesn't apply if it's an Excel spreadsheet. Excel spreadsheets are imported a little bit differently, which I'll show you at the end. So you can see I've got X, Y coordinates, GPS height, this is magnetic data, so that's readings. We've actually corrected the data using a base station, so this is E is the diurnally corrected data. F is the time the data that was recorded. This is the date, line, and mark. I'm not sure what mark is, but um, different line numbers. Let's just check. You can see as I go down, the line number changes. So we did a magnetic survey with several different lines, and each line was labeled differently, which is really nice because you can load it individually into Geosoft. Sorry, my mouse is having issues. So this is the file we're going to import. So what you do is you go into Geosoft, and you can watch the other tutorial on how to get started, so how to create a project in Geosoft. And then once that's up and running, you're going to go to the menus at the top here, go to Database, Import, and we're going to click on ASCII. So like I said, if you're doing Excel, you've got to go down here, so it is a different process. So we are just ASCII today, and I'm going to search for it. And over here is my DAT file, and I'm going to click on Open, and then I'm going to go to Wizard. So the Wizard helps you import it important thing to note here, you want to make sure it starts importing on the correct line. So my data starts on line 2, so I need 2 here. Click Next. Everything else will be fine here. So it's picked up the different columns here, because I've the spaces it's picked up as being the delimiters of the columns. Maybe you, if it's CSV, then the top one should automatically be clicked. If you've got just a comma separating columns, you can actually choose other and put in what is delimiting columns but thankfully mine picks it up automatically click next and then here's where it helps to have headings already in your file because then you don't have to type them in here so you can see it's picked up the heading here is x y gps height reading but the important reason why i'm scrolling to the right here is because we actually need to deal with the line data so let's just get across okay so you can see here it's got diurnal, time, date, line, and mark. And when you click on it, you can see it's, it's loading it in as data. But the only column I want you to change is for this line column, if you've got it. Click here on line data, because then it recognizes that there's several different lines of data and it loads them in individually. You'll see now what I mean. So everything else must be data. But when you click on this line column, make sure you click line. Click finish. Do you want to save the template? I usually say no, but if you're m importing multiple um, files in with these formats, then you can click yes. But for now, I'm going to click no. And so now it's saying, what do you want to call the name of the new database that you're creating? So I click on the three dots. And very important is make sure you're saving it in a folder that means something. So I'm going to go down here to the folder that I have all my data in, so GSF Rising Star, and give it a name that makes sense. So I'm just going to call this one TMI, so Total Magnetic Intensity Survey. And I'm just going to put the word line there so I know that it's importing the lines individually. Click Save. You can change the size, the maximum number of lines and channels if you've got a really big survey, like an Aramaic survey. But for a ground survey, this is more than enough. I click OK. It's told me invalid field recording. This is probably within the file there was some text. So it gets rid of that. It tells you that it can't read it. But that's fine. I'm just going to close that and open this. So you can see here we've got X, Y, GPS height, reading number, diurnal time. Oh, date. That was what I was complaining about. It didn't like the date format. So we've lost our date column. It's not so important because I did the sur well, we did the survey. Excuse me, across one day. But if that's important to you, um, you might be able to change the format when you import it. We can look at that. So if you click in this top left-hand corner here, 
where it says L19. Click so it's blue and highlighted. Now right click and go to this first one that says list. You can see here these are all your different lines that it's loaded in. So the nice thing is you can go to each one individually and it will give you the information about it. Um, it might not seem so important, but if you have a plot of the data, it actually makes quite a difference. So let's do that. So click for me on this reading one heading, or on your, sorry, on your data heading. It might be different from mine. Right click, go down to the bottom. So, sorry, the heading has to be highlighted in blue. Go down here, go show profile. And so this is your magnetic data. So along line six, you can see in this top left corner here. And if I go back here, click on L6, so that it's blue, and now push the page down or page up button, it jumps through the different lines. So now that we're in L9, you can see by the time we got to L10 and up, there was a problem. Some, I actually had magnetic strips in my hat that affected the data, but our data from L9 down looks quite decent. And so this is just a great way of viewing the data, checking if there's any spikes, um, so this is the reading data, so that was the original data, and then diurnal is corrected for the diurnal. So you can actually plot it as well, so click on diurnal, right click, go show profile, and it plots it on top, so there's not much variation. You can see though the values are different, um, but it's plotting them on top of each other, it's adjusting accordingly. You can actually change this if you want, if you put your mouse on top of this um, plot area, right click and go to Y axis options. I always get confused with one. I think click on the second one here down at the bottom, same axis scale for all profiles. Click OK and you can see now what it's done is it's actually put a realistic scale, so 28,000 down to minus or um, that was at least a minus 100 to 100. So that's your diagonal, the corrected data at the bottom and your original data up at the top. So not really the easiest way to view it but at least it's on a realistic uh, scale. So I'm gonna go and put it back to the original settings. Okay, so there is another tutorial you can check out on how to display three different lines, or three consecutive lines, one on top of each other to compare them. So go check that out. Um, but yeah, this is how to import your data. Let's just double, quick, double check quickly for those of you who wanna keep your dates uh, correct, so I'm going back exactly what I did before. I'm just clicking next and next, and let's try to get to the end here. Oops. If I click on date, and I'm not sure, okay, so this might be how you do it. So you just need to tell the GSOP that it's not a normal data format, it's, it's a date format, and so mine is. Let me just think. Okay, it was done in 2015. 11 is the month. So mine is month, day, year. So I would choose this one, month, day, year. Um, and it should then import your dates if that is important to you. Um, yeah, you, I can show you how to do the Excel spreadsheet one. I don't know how to separate out these lines if you import it as an Excel spreadsheet. There must be a way. Please write in if you know how. Um, so that's why I often just convert my Excel spreadsheets into CSV files so I can separate out the lines. But let's quickly just show you data, import, Excel spreadsheets. You can actually import a single sheet or all the sheets. I'm just going to do single because that's all I've got for now. Import data into the current database. Um, no, I would like to create a new database. What is this new database name? I'll give it the same name but I'm going to add Excel on the end. Click OK. I need to navigate to where I've saved it, so yeah, it's that one there. Selections, I just always click on selected sheet and column, let's see if it works, click OK. Might take a bit of time. If your Excel spreadsheet is open right now, it won't allow you to go further, so you need to make sure your Excel spreadsheet's closed. I don't think, it, well, it's not the same problem with CSV files, because my DAT file's been open all this time. And you can see here, it's picking up the headings, and you're dragging down. <coughs> Maybe, I've never actually played around with it, but I suppose you could go down here and then, yeah. 
See, I'm just not, I, I found it not as flexible to use this Excel option. Like, I can't define what the date is. But maybe you can somewhere. I just find it, if it is, it's more complicated this way. But you click OK and it loads it in. As you can see, it's actually loaded the date fine by itself. So maybe this is a better way to do it. But like I said, now all your lines are in one database. So if I right click on lines and go show profile. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, ignore what I just did. If I right click on diurnal and go show profile, this is literally all of your days plotted as one. So that's not really what I want. So I'm not sure how to do that. Let me know if you know how to do it. So yeah, that's how you load a database. If you're worried about your computer crashing, you can go up here and go save project. But otherwise, GSOP does save things. And also when you shut it down, it saves them. Okay.